there's a lot more of that here now, but it's probably it's it's a lot smaller, so there's more opportunities in a place like London. So yeah, okay. still, we'll see a lot of acts who get to a certain level here, then decide they will move um, to the UK in order okay. to kind of develop their career. So I think that still happens quite a lot, um, but it's happening less and less. <laughs> to know how uh, Nyla 9 started or how you created it. Sure, um, I just started it in uh, 2005, a long time ago. Um, at the time there wasn't really any like online music media stuff. Okay. It, became, it was a hobby at first, it was something that I just wanted to do um, and then I picked up it picked up an audience and uh, I soon realized it was something I was able to do long term um so kind of worked for a music magazine because of it for a while and then when that stopped i continued doing what i was doing it gave me different opportunities and i've really just kept up since then doing it all and um, so mostly writing about new music and then playlists a lot of irish music but international music as well it's very important to me to do both um yeah so that's the kind of uh general thing that I do day to day and I've been doing it for like 18 years or something now so uh, it's a long long time um, and happy to be still doing it mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. you live you live in Dublin yeah and you you always lived here or um yeah yeah I have yeah ever since I started this yeah okay so I have a, a huge knowledge on the Dublin scene uh, uh, right now and um, uh, I wanted to know um, for you, like, what are the challenges um, emerging artists can encounter in the Dublin scene? Um, well, I think one of the benefits is it's quite small. Mm -hmm. And so that means you can get to know it very quickly and get to know the people that are involved. Um, that's a great help. It means that if you can embed yourself into a scene, you can easily then figure out how to you know, think, do things like get support slots, mm. uh, work your way up from, kind of build a fan base, really. Um, the, that kind of stuff is not the hardest part because there's plenty of, there's lots of opportunities, lots of venues to do that in. There's now a lot of nights in which new bands can play. Um, I think the hardest thing really is the opposite, is like getting outside of Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, that's when things start to get, I think it's a lot better than it used to be. There used to be no infrastructure here for that okay. at all. Um, very few. Um, I mean, still largely people go to England or at the UK for first for building their career because we're so close to a big um, music city that has so much, um, you know, so many labels and publishers and all those kind of things. So. There's a lot of those people there and um, there's a lot more of that here now, but it's probably it's, it's a lot smaller. So there's more opportunities in a place like London. So yeah, okay. still, we'll see a lot of acts who get to a certain level here, then decide they will move um, to the UK in order okay. to develop their career. So I think that still happens quite a lot, um, but it's happening less and less. And like, do you think like you can still like develop your career uh, internationally and still stay in Dublin? Yeah, I think so. Like, there's more labels. There's um, people like Ruby Works and um, Action Records, and uh, there's smaller collectives. People like Burner Records, uh, doing hip hop stuff. There's so many different examples like uh, Diffusion Lab. Where I live here, I'm in Dublin Twelve, and around the corner from me, Diffusion Lab have their big. Uh, area which is a big big like warehouse thing mm -hmm. so that didn't exist before and so I think that's great because you know there are hooks there are places you can go and there's also people that will help you 
make these things happen. Um, so there's a lot of booking agents here, a lot of managers here. We've got uh, the Association of Independent Music from Ireland okay. is here now. Uh, I got an email from them this morning. So there's all those kind of things that are happening that are much more um, developed than they ever were before. So that's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like a big artist, say a good example is Hosier. He's one of the biggest artists come out of Ireland in the last 10 years. But a lot of his team is based here as well. Okay. Which was good. Even though they're quite an international team. Like he's on Republic Records in America, but there's still quite a lot of people that are here. Um, who will work with him, whether it's the band, mm. um, a, a lot of his team, uh, Ruby Works would be uh, people who work with him a lot. So I think that's interesting because that is, um, that's something that we didn't have. Like U2 is the big band from Ireland for, traditionally and most of their team is abroad. Okay. Um, and, you know, we're kind of seeing more of that infrastructure being built here now. Okay, I suppose. I understand. Going, going abroad so that's really good yeah yeah i i talked yesterday with um a band called uh fine joy and oh yeah uh they mentioned you as a huge help for them uh in their music uh, career and yeah they, they as you they said like there's a really strong community who was really open to help each other and all and um yeah. yeah i wanted to ask you do you have some advice um for um artists that are getting started in dublin um yeah well i mean like with somebody like myself it's very easy to send me an email but i think what people are doing um when they're starting off is that they're much more um they're much more knowledgeable about what to do Mm-hmm. In like 10 or 15 years ago, people were less like sure of what needed to be done. They're much more professional in terms of how they approach their music. Everything sounds professional, sounds like it's in a studio. You don't get a lot of things now which are like, because of technology has enabled us obviously to yeah. mix master songs in much easier uh, fashion. Um, you don't get things that sound really terrible unless it's an aesthetic choice to be a lo-fi artist or something like that but you don't get a lot of that I think there is you know platforms like myself we do I do an Irish tracks every week which is 12 songs Irish songs that I'll platform definitely every week Um, and that's the first kind of a first rung of a ladder kind of thing is how I'd see it a feature there means that a lot of the Irish uh, music industry and some English and American Uh, industry will look at that every week and kind of go oh that's what's happening there and they keep an eye on things it also allows them opportunities and i think stuff like from from my perspective anyway the gig guide really helps um when i met a band recently told me that i featured their gig guide and they were like oh we didn't we got loads of people down who we didn't know and like so that's kind of great because like Mm -hmm. that's what it's about it's about like people who um it is a very helpful scene here, I think, generally. It is quite a, a good place to be if you're looking for advice. And there's, your peers are there to help you. Um, so that's the main thing. We've got, like, Music from Ireland. We've got a really good, um, solid, government-funded um, company who do a lot of the international and emerging artist showcases and also does stuff like Ireland Music Week, which happens every year they bring a lot of industry here they're the only festival i know um, in europe that as far as i'm aware well it was a couple of years ago who would get a team from spotify every year mm. over to talk to artists directly about how spotify works and how like playlists and they would sit in with with the editors and they'd listen to two or three of your songs and that's something that is very rare you don't get that kind of thing uh, every day or most festivals don't have it so I think that's great. Um, there are loads of different examples. I think it's a really good place. It's got lots of um, loads of opportunities to play live as well. I think at the moment, so that's really good. Mm-hmm. And there's always people willing to give you advice. I think as well. So yeah, I think there's there's great opportunities out there for people if if you just get out and then and get a part, be a part of the scene. You know, like. Yeah. Talk to people, like that's all it is, just talking to people mm-hmm. and getting to know them. So, um, and you can very, anyone can send me an email, for example, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's very, it's quite it's easy really to do. Yeah, we're all very accessible, I think. Okay. 
And um, I get I get like probably two hundred emails from Irish artists a week. You know oh I mean? wow, so, okay. And you you answer to all of them? Um no I can't. It's like that would be like new songs mostly. Okay. Um with that it's kind of like I actually say that now is I try and listen to everything but I can't I don't have the time to yeah. respond to everything. But what I will do is if I feature somebody, I will at least add them on social media. Um, mm. If I don't feature them in the Irish tracks, I'll add them uh, to a playlist maybe. I think it's good, but I don't have space or time for it. Um, and if not, um, I will some, often email people back if I think there's something good there or if they ask for some advice specifically. It is hard, like I said, to really give that advice all the time. But it's something when I when I feel like if somebody asks me, I will try and do that for okay. sure. Or, and if I think it's something that I can give good advice on, then I will try for sure. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, yeah. It's a, I think it's just a small city. It's a small scene. Yeah, it's small. Then, uh, it is easier to get out there and like mm -hmm. just kind of go, "Hi, how are you?" <laughs> yeah, you know, and. You know, like everybody everybody know everybody so you always know someone who knows someone that can help you yeah yeah i think so i think so yeah. so useful and um i also found out that uh, a lot of uh, gig venue closed uh, the past few years um yeah um do you think most uh, club spaces really mostly club yeah clubs and do you think that yeah. it had an impact on the dublin music scene I mean, any closure of any space has an impact because mm. it's opportunities that you don't know exist anymore that you don't yeah. see being there anymore. So it's kind of, it's the unknowable. You don't really know what's happening or what you're missing because it's gone and you, you can't physically, you can't see that opportunity mm. anymore. So it's kind of hard to know. But I think one thing that's happened, um, I'm sure it's happened in many other places, but in terms of um, like uh, people getting together because through COVID being treated badly by the government mm -hmm. and having to sh speak up for uh, their industry for the first time in a real way. That's not something that uh, many Irish music industry people have had to do much in previous years. So that's interesting. I think that we, we kind of had an informal uh, we had a lot of groups who formed together in that time, which maybe is somewhat still kind of uh, happening a bit. So, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's because of that, um, because of the last few years, I think there's a lot of talk about uh, spaces at the moment in terms of um, club spaces, but also the club spaces are the ones that... Um, will allow other electronic artists and single um, performers to play, to DJs, to be part of that as well. Uh, it's really important that we have ecosystems and places in which it don't cost uh, an arm and a leg in which to play, mm. um, because that means then that uh, artists can go and without having to spend loads of money can then um, play these events and play these gigs and the, the, the more you can do for say free in kind of gigs and stuff like that the more opportunities you'll get to um for acts to really develop themselves and get to know others so that's really important i think that's been really good but i mean the high cost of living here doesn't help so that is a big mm. factor at the moment because okay. it's very hard for artists to make a continue to make a living in or in Dublin when it's so expensive yeah. so it's very hard for anyone to do that so mm. that makes it difficult so yeah that is a worry for sure mm. and also um I was thinking um do you think there's a uh, most popular genre uh, in Dublin at the time most popular what genre of music um uh I mean, it, it's there's never one thing, and I think that's great because it means that there's so dirty different um, styles happening. Mm -hmm. Once there's a lot of hip hop stuff, there's a lot of R and B, there's a lot of jazz, there's a lot of new soul, there's a lot of um, 
a lot of indie and rock as there always is, a lot of electronic music, a lot of experimental. I think it's a good sign when your your scene or your city has loads yeah. of different genres. Mm -hmm. It means that everyone is doing a bit of everything and that's only to be encouraged, I think. So um, yeah, it's great when that happens. Um, and I think we, I don't think see that going away anytime soon. I think it's going to continue. So yeah, okay. um, that's, that's the way, that's the way the like kind of, um, the internet has kind of democratized all of the genres. So people would, I don't really think about genres as much anymore, but certainly it enables people a jazz scene to develop. A lot of people maybe go into um, like BIM and places like that yeah. where you're, they're actually learning the business of music as well, mm -hmm. which is great because it means then that, you know, you're coming out of college and you're coming out of courses fully aware of what's coming next and what you need to do. And I think you're seeing a lot of that in the new acts who are, are much more aware of what's going on much more aware of what's, what they need to do to build a career out of it. Because mm. the hardest thing to do is build a career out of music, I think. Like, there's nothing harder than that. Mm. <laughs> it's so difficult to, to build a career in music. So, um, but a lot of people are, are learning how to do that much quicker now than they ever did before. Yeah. And, like, do you think there's, like, um, well, varies, but um, what comes into, into your mind when, um, like, for example, uh, venue or media that supports that really supports emerging artists right now um workman's club probably mm -hmm. it's quite cheap to rent um generally speaking grand social is very good um you could do with a few more of those venues but well, workman's has two or three different venues whelan's has a new venue called little whelan's which seems to be quite good in those terms it could work quite well for a lot of people um, so I think it's really positive. There's lots of positives there um, that really help and are able to see. I can see, like, you need that first rung of the ladder in which to establish yourself, in which to start, just to start yeah. playing, getting experience. Yeah. And there's plenty of places at the moment that allow you to do that. I think that's really good. Mm. Um, yeah, when I think, I think a lot of the likes of, in terms of live music, certainly, uh, would be for me Whelan's, um, Workman's, Grand Social, yeah. Okay, and do you think this live music um, like per permits uh, emerging artists to attract their audience? Yeah, yeah, I mean I think that's the number one way in which mm. art grow themselves um, before, you know, I mean certainly you're not, if we're talking about like pop, more popular acts, they might go to radio first and yeah. then do that kind of thing. But I think for most of what I feature, which is the live bands, um, that's the secondary part of it. Um, it's live first, forwarding second maybe, or maybe in parallel, but it allows you to do things. Um, it's building your network and building the people that you want to work with and building little scenes and kind of little communities and mm. uh, finding people to work with yeah finding um people to play with as well in a band so yeah i think it's i'm very positive on it, about it at the moment i think it's it's quite good mm. and there's also a, a direct link between you and the public yeah mm. yeah i think so yeah we've always been irish audiences have always been very interested in uh, music new music mm. um traditionally so and then even we're talking about genres like look at like tr traditional Irish music now. There's a lot of young traditional Irish musicians um, because it's been seen as something that we have ourselves that is completely different to maybe some other uh, countries. So that's something that's quite unique and um, that we can use uh, to our advantage. And um, yeah, we're you're seeing articles in the New York Times about emerging Irish art, traditional artists, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's a good time to be uh, in this country, I think, at the moment. And if you, you know, there's funding available as well, crucially from the likes of uh, Music from Ireland and Culture Ireland, in which to take um, 
take yourself to the big international showcase festival. I'm going over to the Great Escape in the next couple of weeks in Brighton. There's a lot of there's like 18 Irish bands going over there. Um, Zeppelin so West is be a big one if you're looking for America. Um, Eurosonic is a great one in January in the Netherlands. So they're great places to be. They are really good places to be, and that's where careers happen from here. But um, Irish um, is considered quite cool at the moment in terms of UK and Europe, and I think in terms of Brexit as well. Mm, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of agents want to work with an Irish band because they don't have to, if they can get them on the, if they can get them on the circuit in the EU, they don't have to worry so much about Brexit because Brexit is a pain in the arse for yeah. everyone. So, yeah, yeah. there's a lot more emphasis on Irish bands at the moment, which is good. Okay. Well, um, that's all for the questions. Um, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Sure. And sure, no worries. Um, have a nice day. You too. You too. Right. Thank Very you. Very good. All right, Lena. Very good. Bye. All right. <laughs>